Thanks for dropping by, Can't Let Her Die DIY. If you found this channel, you found this video, you must have a 2014 Subaru Outback. That's what this is. Can't let this die. No way. We love this. All wheel drive. Beautiful in the snow. Gotta love it. What are we working on? We gotta work on the brakes. We gotta get the brakes working on this thing. The rear brakes have never been serviced on this. It's a 2014. That's seven years. Now, we didn't have it for seven years. We just recently got it. My wife's car, actually. I've seen the records. Never been serviced. Anyway, I'm just coming in. I just got a, my new drill. Well, new drill to me. Check this out. This is what they used to use 200 years ago to build the burns and to drill holes. So that's a one inch. It works great. They're ripping through that wood. It's ripping through it. That is awesome. Other channels show you the new fancy drills. I'm going old school. This is old school here. Works with whether you got power or not. Anyway, let's get to it. We got work to do. We're going to take a look at Subaru's brake system. The drum brakes. The rear brakes. They have brake shoes. They have calipers. They have brake pads. It's, they got sliding pins, they got a rotor, a hub rotor, a hat rotor, a drum rotor, whatever you want to call it. We're going to go in there, and Subaru has done a really good job making it very easy for us to change out our brakes, do brake maintenance. And I'll show you, there's two or three key features in there that's really cool. You're going to love this. It's going to be great. You want to see the tools you'll need? It's only a few tools. Follow me. Here's the tools that I use in the video. Uh, here's a torque wrench. Now you don't really need that, but it is good to have. Here's a, a ratcheting drive, 3 8 size, and four sockets. We have the 19 millimeter, the 14 millimeter, 14 millimeter deep well socket, and the one half inch. We got some box wrenches here. We got an 18 millimeter and a 14 millimeter. We have a drill bit. Hmm, interesting. Why am I using a drill bit? Well, you'll see in the video. 1130 seconds is the size there. And these are really important. These are 5 16th of an inch hexagon bolts. You'll see them in the video. Crucial rule. And this is, uh, you don't really need this, but sure is fun to have. It's an angled uh, breaker bar. It's ratcheting as well. Pretty cool. And this always makes an appearance in my videos. It's my grandfather's 100-year-old screwdriver. Look at that, baby. Is that nice? It's got some character. If this thing could talk. And what do we have here? A wire wheel on a drill for cleaning. We got an adjustable wrench. And we have a vice grips. We have a BFH, big friendly hammer. That comes out. Ooh, PB blaster. We got some stubbornness in this video. When that comes out, we got brake parts cleaner, we got anti seize lubricant, silver gray. Yeah, sounds like we got some stubborn bolts. And what's this? Brake lubricant, silicone, silicone ceramic. Very important. And this is just a bungee cord and quick grips for compressing uh, brake cylinders. That's what I use. You could use a C clamp, you can use whatever you have in the shop. So that's it. Not a heck of a lot of tools, but some of the stuff you already have around the shop. So let's get at it. Why don't you throw on some old clothes, because we're going to get dirty. I'll throw on my old clothes. Meet me back here in five minutes. We'll get into the very center of the braking system, the rear brakes in this Subaru Outback, and see what makes it tick. You got this. You got this. Hey, you're back. I couldn't wait for you, actually. I took my 19 millimeter socket and already got the tire off. Got those lug nuts off with the 19 millimeter. The tire is good. Now make sure you put the tire in a safe spot. And now we can see the Subaru Outback uh, brake system. We have a drum rotor right here. There's the drum part of the rotor. Uh, what do we have here? A caliber. 
we have brake pads right in there. They squeeze on the rotor and, and stop the machine. Uh, but before we do anything, I should show you how to jack it up. Okay, so I know a lot of you guys know it, but some of you may not. And uh, you don't want to damage your own vehicle by placing the jack in the wrong spot. Where do you place the jack? Good question. I'm glad you asked it. If you go to the back door, right under the door handle, drop straight down, right under here. If you take a look, you'll see some notches in this pinch weld part that comes down. This is structurally uh, supported to take the weight of the vehicle. This is where Subaru recommends you place the jack. There's two notches on either side. I place my jack stand in between the two notches. Fits in nicely in that groove. So to put my jack stands there, I put my jack just ahead of it. I jack it up, position my jack stands, and lower it down on my jack stands. Always use jack stands. I also have the uh, my front tire chopped. So we are in there. We are solid. And then I push up a little bit on this jack just to give a secondary level of safety. So we got that, we got that. And now we want to do the push test. So now that we got a position with our jack stands, we got the front wheels chalked, uh, we give it a push. We'd rather have it push and fall off the jacks while we're up here pushing on it than when we're, our legs are underneath of it working on the brakes. So let's give it a shot. Let's see how safety it is. Safety is. <laughs> I can budge it a little bit, but it is solid. We're good. We're good to go. Okay, let's take off the caliper right here. So we have two 14 millimeter bolts, one right there and one right here. Can you get those? At the end of the pointer. Those are caliper bolts. That they will allow us to remove this caliper right off, which has the brake pads in there. So 14 millimeters. Now we have an issue already. We have a problem here. It's hard to access this bolt because this brake line is in the way. So as you see, uh, a, a socket and a drive is not going to be able to get in there. You can get it with a box wrench. You don't have enough room this way. You don't want to bend that line too much and try to get that in there. So you can get it with a box wrench, box wrench or you might want to pick up one of these. these things become very handy in uh, tight spots like this. It's a flexible head on it, so you can get around certain angles that you normally can't. So, I got a 14 millimeter on there. Get in there, like that. And uh, see if we can break it free. There. You don't need one of these things, of course, but uh, they're kind of cool and they're kind of fun. So let's see if we can get it with the box wrench, shall we? And there. And that one down there you can access with your uh, ratcheting drive anyway. So there's multiple ways to do it. You don't need fancy tools. With the bolts removed, now we should be able to flip this caliber right up. Now I could probably force it, put some pressure on that and get it up. Sometimes they get stuck, so I want to show you, you may need to compress your cylinder. There's a little cylinder in there pushing out on the brake pads. Uh, we need to press it back. You can do it with this. It's pretty easy. So like I said, I find this bar clamp's really easy. I have it on, on back here on the uh, cylinder and over here on the caliber bracket caliber bracket right here and not the uh, caliber so now this should be able to push this caliber this way by depressing the brake cylinder inside and that will free up the brake pads so as I clamp on that you can see it moving it's already moved out quite a bit and we release it and now look how easy it is. Take this and it just simply comes off easily like that. And now we hang this up so it doesn't fall and rupture uh, this brake line. We want to protect it as much as we can. We want to replace as few things as possible. 
I'll just kind of hang it up like this. Let it dangle there. And that keeps it out of the way like that. And, uh, and now we can see the brake pads. Oh, look, getting pretty crusty. We're still good though. And that's why the rotor's not damaged. We still have that much brake pads left on that one. The back one is always worse. Oh, we're starting to get, uh, yeah, down to there on the back one. And you know what? There is some damage to the rotor. So that back brake pad, you see that? It is not down to the steel. The steel is right there. That's the brake material. So that's, uh, you know, it's half worn out, but it has striations in it, it has grooves in it. That's because of the rotor. So the person that did the brakes last, they, uh, they let the brakes go too long. The brake pads went down to steel. It started to put grooves into the rotor. And instead of replacing the rotor, they just threw new brake pads on it, which is, is not good. You should have, they should have replaced the rotor. So when you have grooves on your rotor, you can either have them turn, which shaves them down with a lathe, a metal lathe, shaves them down smooth, then they don't damage your brake pads. They didn't do it, they did a, a quick job. So we're going to do it right, we're going to replace the rotors and the brake pads, just like we did on the other side. So there you go, good to know. But on this side, it's smooth. So there, tell, that's also conducive to, it's always the back brake pad that uh, wears first. And uh, so it's very misleading. If you look at from this side, it's smooth, but on the back side, if you can get in there, can you see those grooves right there? Right there, anywhere's in there? Okay, so you see those grooves right there? So that rotor is damaged. It has grooves in it, time to get it out. Let's change it out. We're here. Okay, you're underneath the vehicle looking at the back side of the uh, brake, brake bracket, the caliber bracket right here. And there's the sliding pins there. And look at that one. That one is seized. It won't push in, it won't pull out. That's great. It's going to make a better video. This one slides properly and freely. So this is probably the reason why that rotor is damaged. Uh, the previous person that worked on these brakes, it wasn't me, uh, they should have cleaned this up more. This probably seized up. It uh, jammed the brake pad down against the rotor until it wore down to the steel and then it damaged the, uh, damaged the uh, rotor. Put the grooves in there. Right, so that's an issue there. We'll have to clean that up. Right now, since you're in here, let's get this bracket right off. There's a bolt there, 14 millimeter. And there's a bolt here, 14 millimeter. Just stay there and we'll crack this baby free. I'm going to use this, but you can get this with a box wrench. I'm quite sure you can. This is just so much fun. A squeaker. Fourteen millimeter bracket bolt. Fourteen millimeter bracket bolt. And your bracket. Lovely. I've relocated you to my workbench now where I have the uh, brake bracket and we're going to put it in the vise to hold it for us. Uh, there's that. And now we got that slider there is totally seized and this one is good. That's good. Uh, so we're going to clean this up. Then we're going to attack this one. We're going to free it up. We're going to, it's in a seized state right now and we're going to loosen that up. 
water must have got in there and uh, caused rust, which seized that, which caused the whole problem with the rotor back there. We got new brake pads, and they come with new clips. This hardware here, the sliding clips, so we don't have to clean those up. Good quality brake pads always come with the new sliders, and I kind of like to go with quality, but you could clean those up if you really wanted to, because they will not rust. They're stainless steel, so they will clean up, but they come with the pads, so why not go with new? So we, what I do is I do clean up right here and right here, and that's very important. So we're going to use this. This is a wire brush on a drill. This is awesome for brake cleaning. And we use our goggles. Okay, let's tackle these slide pins. This is the one that is not seized, slides back and forth pretty good, and this is the seized one. So we'll start with this. First we want to get that boot, slide that boot down without rupturing it. The boot of the slide pin looks pretty good, so just kind of free it up a little bit there. Then you can pull that down, and you can pull out the slide pin. There it is. And that has a rubber section on it. So let's take a look here. So we're going to clean these up. And uh, this one has a rubber part to it. Like that. So that is that stops vibration. Uh, Subaru has put that on there so it prevents brake noise and that sort of thing. Any vibration rattling in there. So that's, that's what that is. So that looks pretty good. We'll clean that up a little later. How are we going to get this off? Good question. The boot looks pretty good, so I don't want to damage that. Free it up, and it slides off. Okay, and this is not coming off. Well, maybe the old Mr. Vice Grips is the answer. Okay. Okay, there, back and forth. She's starting to loosen up. And we want to reuse this slide pin, so we're going to gently get it out. There it is. It has no grease in it. So the last time, uh, the, whoever it was that put the brake pads on, he didn't take these out and clean them up and pack them with new grease. It ran out of grease. And then it seized and it demolished his brake pads and it wrecked the rotor. And then he, they put a new brake pads on there and didn't clean this up and it seized again. So that is what's happening. So uh, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to clean these up, reuse them, and uh, do it like you should. So sometimes people don't replace the rotors or just replace the brake pads and don't clean these things up. They're trying to do it quick and they're trying to save money, but in the long term, it doesn't really save money because it ends up wrecking the rotors, it jams on you, and uh, ruins the rotors, ruins the brake pads, and you end up doing it anyway. So um, probably should have done it right from the start. But uh, anyway, we're going to do it now, clean these up, and get back in business. Now you notice only one has a rubber part to it, this one here does not. You want to make sure these go back the way they were. You don't want to switch them like this. So make sure you take a mental note that the rubber goes on this side and not on this side.
Okay, now with your 2164th drill bit, if you look down in there, you can see a lot of crud. Get the light in there. Anyway, we're not drilling this out. We're just, this is the right size to slide in there and just to clean out any caked in grease remaining or rust or anything around that hole. So that slide pin doesn't have gunk in there stopping it from sliding. I may go to the next size up actually. Oh, yeah. That's the right size. Yeah. It's a little thing, but it's important. 11.30 seconds. The other thing, some people use the wrong grease. You really need to have brake slider pin lubricant for this stuff. Don't try to get by with just normal grease. It should be silicone based ceramic grease for slider pins. Got some nice sliding action there, folks. Look at that. Now I like to slide the boot out, extend that up, get rid of any air, and slide it on like that. And now it bounces back really good there. Okay. Beautiful. And we do the same thing to this side. Be careful not to damage this rubber part. fresh grease lubricant, slider pin lubricant in there. Make sure it doesn't run out as we may get another seven years out of these slider pins if it doesn't run out of grease or lubricant. And in we go. Rotating as you go to distribute the grease Some hydraulic pressure kicking back on that. Nice, nice. Let me pack more into this one. I think, yeah, I think it needs more grease. And wipe off the excess. Now we apply some anti seize silver grade uh, to underneath the uh, brake hardware where it has a tendency to rust. Remember where we cleaned it out right there? Now, if you don't live in a uh, wintry, uh, you don't have a wintry climate, uh, you don't have salt on the roads, maybe you don't need to do this, but we do. And if you have an all-wheel drive uh, Subaru Outback, you probably do live in a snowy area. So uh, you may want to do this on both sides. So this is underneath the, uh, underneath the stainless steel hardware that comes with the brake pads. Uh, we don't put lubricate, lubrication on the uh, stainless steel sliding uh, hardware because it doesn't rust. If it uh, will slide this in here like that, 
and snap it down just like that. So that's where rust will form on the underside of this and it, if rust grows in there it compresses this sliding hardware and then your brake, brake pads won't slide as easily because it's being squeezed. So that's why it's very important to clean those down, clean the rust down from there and put this anti-seize grease on if you live in a, if you have salt on your roads and snow and uh, that will make your brakes last much longer. A little bit of grease folks, a little bit of anti-seize grease kind of helps. I find anyway, but there's lots of different ways and different opinions on the subject. But uh, I like it and my vehicles last a long time. Now I got some grease on there, I gotta clean it off. Because it was on my hands. Darn it. I find it's not as good. If you put grease on here, it's it's not it's not effective. It actually makes it worse because you get brake powder dust coming off the brake pads and it'll mix with the with the uh, with the grease and it'll cause a, a a crud and it'll jam your brake pads. So I like to keep it grease free on this side, grease underneath. Anti-seize grease. There you go, that's it. Okay, that's now it. we gotta get the rotor off. This is the damaged rotor. There's grooves on the back. Uh, we gotta get this off. It's been damaged and it is, it woke up on the wrong side of the bed because it is grumpy. It does not want to get off. It is stuck on. It is. There's nothing holding it on, no bolts. And I can't wiggle it at all. So, it's gonna make for a good video because now we're into another problem. Much like the seized sliding pin, we have a seized rotor. It usually seizes right around here and underneath there, 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 there. Uh, so one thing you can do is, uh, first thing, this is a really good one because it's short. It's heavy, yet it's short because you got to be accurate with your blows and get in between the studs right there. Bam, bam, bam. And a little bit on the side there. And what this does is jar it free. Hopefully it breaks the bond of the rust attaching to the uh, drum brakes. drum rotor is definitely seized on. It is, this vehicle is seven years old. The rear brakes have never been done. Uh, this is the original rotor. It's never been off. Um, someone has replaced the brake pads at one point, but they've never serviced the brakes. So, uh, seven years, that's what you got. You got a seized rotor. Now, Subaru is a lot better than some of the other uh, vehicle manufacturers in this regard because uh, they have... Uh, threaded holes right here, one right there and right there on the rotor. So what you can do is use 5 16 hex head bolts and you can screw them right in here like that, right? And one on either side and this will push out on the uh, on the rotor. So this is really a nice feature and uh, all rotors should have those. So Subaru is really thinking about the uh, homeowner, the home uh, mechanic, and uh, making it easy for them, easier for them. So let's take a look, see if this works. So we could beat and pound. If we didn't have these, you could beat, have to beat pound on it. I have a, a few other techniques that you can get off, uh, get your rotors. I do have some videos on that. Uh, I have a video where of an F-150 rotor and Chevy Colorado is really tough to get those rotors off. So uh, you might want to take a look at those, but Subaru, thank you Subaru. Let's see if this works. So that is push, putting pressure pulling out on the rotor. And then the hammer's jarring free, breaking rust bonds. There it comes. There it goes.
Okay, so now we have it free. It's no longer seized. But what is happening is the shoes on the inside, they, the parking brake shoes, they, when, they, when you apply the parking brake, they expand, they rub against this hat part of the rotor. And sometimes they will uh, grind a little groove in there since this is seven years, has never been serviced. There's a groove and it's catching on the shoes. So what we got to do, and uh, Subaru has thought of this as well, they've left a little excess window right here. So it's just a rubber plug in the rotor. And it's pretty cool because if you can get that off, and it's never been off, You can get that off. Now you can rotate this rotor around to the bottom where you can adjust the shoes in close and pull them away from this hat part of the drum and then you should be able to pull the rotor right off. So that's what we're going to attempt to do. We no longer need these bolts. So we'll take them off. back on. I'll rotate it there. You can see this the star nut on the adjuster. So what we can do this allows us to uh, adjust the parking brakes. Now, I believe you got to rotate it down. That's five, six. get down here you can see this is the star nut this is the adjuster if you crank this down and it, then th these brake shoes will be pulled together and get pulled away from the hat of the rotor and it won't be catching on it and you'll be able to remove the rotor so that's what I did beautiful Thanks Subaru, you thought of a few things and made it as easy as possible to change the rotor. And uh, we definitely need it. So you can see where, right here is where it was binding and seizing to the uh, rotor. It's mostly right around here. You can see the rust there. That's what was grabbing onto the rotor. And then the second, it was these brake shoes were grabbing onto it. Now you can keep pulling on it. If you do, you will bend and break these springs, these little pins right there, and there's a pin there. You'll bend and break those, break some of these springs. You'll break parts if you really force it. So that's the best way. Hope that helps. Hope that's a helpful hint, and uh, let's get at it. Clean this puppy up. Check it out, a brand new rotor. Beautiful. And this is the high-end rotor. It's coated. Right? It's coated for rust protection. It's beautiful. It's got the peephole, right, with the plug. It's got those two uh, threaded holes for the screws, for the bolts. It's exactly the same. This beauty is going on. Which means we don't need this. This is a wrecked rotor. It is. Uh, it has grooves in it. It is wrecked. It is no good. This one, destined for the dump. I love that. Love it. Time to clean this puppy up. We gotta get all this uh, surface rust out of the way and we'll put anti-seize grease on there. Make sure this never happens again. Uh, so you don't need to see this or we'll speed it up. Cue the music.
brake parts cleaner here and uh, give her a good little spray. Anti-seize grease. New rotor going on. Nice. Okay, so rotating the star nut down loosens it up. So rotating it up tightens it up. One, two. Now I can pull that off. So that's about it here, dragon. So that is, uh, so I can, I can barely pull it out. There's a little drag there. That's perfect. That's how you adjust your parking brake. That's where I like them. Just a little bit of drag. You can hear it. And my battery ran out on my light. <sighs> Did you keep your rubber plug? You're going to need it. The new rotors do, do not come with the rubber plug. Take it off your old, put it on there. We're going to fully depress the cylinder on this uh, caliber here, the piston. So I got my uh, quick grip uh, clamps on to the back and to the piston so we can compress, fully compress that. Just right now we'll clean up the caliper a little bit here. Try not to damage the rubber. So that helps to remove any rust that may have formed there because rust does form there over time and it's been seven years so. And now we hit it with the anti-seize grease. Silver grade. Nice. And since this is going to be metal on metal contact, uh, this also helps to prevent any squeaking or anything that's going on like that. So I put a little bit on the tabs right there, a little bit on that tab. Those two areas that we just cleaned up, and that'll help to prevent rust from reforming where it likes to form. Moving right along, yeah. Okay, remember our beautiful br bracket after we cleaned it up with the new hardware and the cleaned up sliding pins? We'll put our br bracket back on here. The same way we took it off. Like so. Bracket bolts. Oop. Doing it with the left hand, it's the opposite way. Uh, this way. Bracket bolts. And we'll tighten those down to spec. And I believe the spec is 48 foot pounds. I'll double check that and I'll put it, uh, put it in the video for you. It's good to start these by hand so you don't get them cross threaded. So these are the bracket bolts, always torque them down the spec. Check your manufacturer's uh, recommendations for the torque specs on these bracket bolts, but I believe they're 48 foot-pounds for my vehicle. Right there, baby. Ah, 48. So it's not too bad if you want to. Okay. Now it's time for quality brake pads, and you can see this is a quality set of brake pads. It's got this little divider here for brake dust, and it uh, also has this so, uh, little squeaker indicator for when the brake pads are getting low. Very important, this is the only one that does that. So that goes on the back. There. So they slide in like that. And they're nice and loose, see? They slide back and forth. That's properly installed with the, this lower part. This wear indicator is on the bottom of the back side of the pad. And the front pad. Put the top up first. Top up first and bottom in second. There you go. So that, that's free to slide back and forth. 
that's free to slide back and forth. Boom. Beautiful. Let's get the caliber on. And the caliber is on. Just like that. And now we'll put the caliber bolts in. Put them onto your fingers so you don't cross thread. Like that. And now we'll torque those babies down to 20 foot pounds. Sometimes this will turn on you, but sometimes it won't. On this one, it is turning. We got everything lubricated up so well. And there it is. That's that beautiful sound. And this one is not spinning on us. And there it is. Double check. Triple. Yeah. You know how your teacher always told you to double check your work? Let's do that. So we got the uh, we got the caliber on. Did we twist the brake line? No. The brake line's not twisted. That's a common mistake. Uh, we got that on. We got the grease. Everything's cleaned up. Um, the caliber pin bolts uh, torqued down to 20 foot-pounds. Both of them. We got the brake bracket uh, torqued down. Those bolts are torqued down to 48. That's good. That's on there strong. That's important. Everything's good. We got the new rotor on. We got the grease in the proper place. We got our plug in. We are good to go. Double check. I think we're good. Throw the tire on and we'll call it a day. So I'm also rotating the tires here. So this is the rear passenger rear side. So I'm looking for the front driver side. So, and there it is. Front driver's side tire, beautiful. Summer, still got good tread, we're good to go. Let's throw this puppy on. Lower it down, gently, safely, patiently, and torque to spec. These lug nuts are 90 foot-pounds. Torque the spec in a crisscross pattern. Bingo! And we got our locking nut on there. And we got old trusty. Been around for a long time. that on there like that and we got no way to determine what the uh, torque specs on this is but I use my experienced trusty arm and it is right there and that beautiful sound that is torqued to 90 foot pounds that tires not coming off that's the way Subaru wants it and we are done don't forget to send me some comments. Love to hear how you guys are doing. Love to hear your comments on the brake system on the Subarus compared to the Ford and the Chevs. Anything at all. Love to hear you from you. Give me a thumbs up and uh, hope the shop boss has a message for you. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Well, you don't have to listen to him, but uh, glad to have you here. We had a lot of fun and hope you had as well. We'll see you in the next video. You got this. You do.